and welcome to Scriptonite Reacts. I'm Scriptonite. Today we're going to be watching season two, episode two of Fargo. Guys, this is so much better than season one. It's not even funny. I'm getting like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. level excited about the potential for this show now. I don't know if you guys watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. but the, the first season, like you've got to watch it. You can't skip it and go on and watch season two. But it's sort of fairly formulaic. Nothing really jumps out at you until kind of the end of the, the season. But from there on, it's just each season gets progressively better. It's It really is a fantastic show. I think it's qu quite underrated. I, I don't know if it's because it's Marvel or something. People treat it like it's kind of frivolous. But like, there's some really amazing acting in that show. So if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend. But yeah, back to Fargo. <sighs> As you can see, I'm in the same top. I'm going straight into episode two. I've had a little break. I've like exported a file and, you know, had some lunch. But I was really like, I really want to watch the next episode. It just left me like, like with a good cliffhanger. Like this is a story I'm really excited about. So we've got kind of several camps that, that we're following. We've got the Solverson family. It's um, Lou, Betsy and little baby Molly. We've got that married couple, Kirsten Dunst and the Breaking Bad Boy. It doesn't matter how old that guy gets, he always looks like a boy to me. Is it just me? Or is that like if you've seen him in Breaking Bad, he always looks boyish to you? Or if people that have found him later feel the same thing? Anyway, never seems like a kind of man to me, that guy. <clears throat> We've got Hank, the chief. Who's sort of part of Solverson's police crew. We've got those two guys that Lou had the beers with. Didn't catch their names. Don't understand the relationship. Brothers, friends. I'm not clear. And we've got the... I want to say the Gearhearts. If I've got that wrong, I'll correct it at the bottom. During editing. They're, I guess, a, a sort of a crime family-ish. Not clear. They seem like a kind of mafiosa sort of situation. And I'm wondering if that's the same thing with the trucking that the Hess family was involved in in season one. Those sort of you know, drug cartel connections. Again, I have no idea yet because it hasn't really been laid out. Um, I'm sure when I watch the editing in, in episode one now, I'm going to be like, are you kidding? They told you specific. They're a bunch of fucking amateurs. Uh, Walter, hey, Walter, will you just... Shut the fuck up! But it didn't go. So them and the sons, I'm going to try to remember those. Dodd, Bear and Rye. Rye, we have seen, is trying to assert himself. He's the runt of the litter. He's a bit pissed off. He's trying to establish his reputation as a man and impress Dodd and impress Otto, his dad. And Floyd, the mum's name was Floyd. So how he decides to do this is he's he's going to create a new line of business, which is this amazing new typewriter, which is about to be put out of business, incidentally, by Microsoft very shortly. But, you know, it's 1979 still, so it's all the rage. He's trying to intimidate a judge who has frozen the bank accounts of his wannabe business partner. He goes to threaten the judge, and that's where we have the diner debacle, which just wipes everyone out. But then as he's leaving, he sees what he thinks is a UFO. I'm not, I'm still not 100% on that. I'm not going to be 100% on that until little green men start walking about the town and other people see them. But he experiences like he's seeing a UFO and then, bam! Kristen Dunst smacks into him in the car. We don't know that at the point. And just keeps going with him hanging into the car through the windscreen. So now we've got this issue where it's probably that crime family is going to be looking for Rye. The cops, Lou Solverson and the cop crew, are looking for Rye and potentially believe... So they're looking for the accomplice because they think those are why the tyre tracks are outside the Waffle Hut. So that could lead them to Kirsten Dunst. And then you've got this... Other crime syndicate, Fargo, that now because Otto has had a stroke, the head of the Gearhearts family, they want to move in 
on the territory so it is all kicking off and in the background are characters are in distress betsy molly's mum, lou's wife has cancer that married couple that marriage is going to shit <laughs> that girl would be in california now if she had half a drop of courage she's just stuck so she's trying to i think create a situation where she has the courage and so she's got into all of this help self-help stuff and and the guy really is not understanding the level of out that she is about their marriage right now he just he's picking up stuff but he's not kind of putting it all together but he's got rid of rye by stabbing him and he's now in the freezer So I'm excited to see what's going to happen in this episode. So without further ado, let's have it. Mama can I hunt, mama can I hunt, huh? Can I, mama, won't you please let me, mama can I hunt? Oh, and can I just say again how beautiful That's shot this is? Mama make Willie quit pulling at my hair. Mama, ouch, ouch, mama just make Willie quit it. Tommy, if you don't put down that stick, I'm gonna wear you out with it, boy. Be cool. I'm seeing twins. Is anyone else seeing twins? Mm. Indian Joe some porn. How generous of uh, him. World War One. It was an artillery shoots in my granddad, a gunner. Blasted mustard gas at the Allies. Had him dancing like poison rats. Brits caught him in a raid, hung him by his thumbs for six days straight. So this is what we're doing. This is nothing. Are you listening to me? Is he listening to me? Cut off his ears. Oh Wake my god. He's dead. I think. Weak. Uh, Uncle Dodd? Doc's finished. Grandma wants us. thinking to myself you know Lou was talking about uh, obviously something really bad is going to go down at some point in this season because we've had it for you know we've had it ex sort of described to us uh by I think predominantly by Lou in season one it's like bodies on top of bodies like up to the second floor of what don't know and he was talking about the same evil and I interpreted that as like a particular personal character that's kind of like a Lord Malvo level dark. So I'm looking at, obviously right now I'm thinking it's Dodd. Last episode I was thinking Rye was somehow going to turn into that. A bit like kind of Lester went through that, you know, metamorphosis. But I'm really intrigued and I just, I cannot... I'm gonna have to stop saying it, but I just cannot get over how this thing is shot. It doesn't really, it doesn't look like anything else. I don't, I don't think I've seen a split screen used in forever on television, and they're using it really effectively. Like last episode, when there was that shot of the thing on the floor in the snow, and over here was a wide, that was like a close up, and over here was like a wide shot of Silverson walking towards it. And then he comes into shot and it just, I love shit like that. I really do. It doesn't take me out of the drama. It's just like it creates this feeling of like, this was made with care and they made a really beautiful thing. And I, I really appreciate that. Um, and I can't wait to do the editing because I see like 10 times more in editing than I see during the episode. So anyway, back to it. Play. I see twins. 
one's got a scar. It is gonna go down. Who are the goons? Mmm, that bread looks good. Kansas City. They want to buy us up. So they came to you then? They came to see your father, but he's not well. So they talked to me as a surrogate. I should have been there. Jeez, Dad, don't be such a baby. Shut up. She shouldn't be in here. She's old enough. I told her to stay. She's a girl. And girls grow up to be women. And change boys' diapers. Quite. Where's your little brother? Right? Haven't seen him. Who knows with that kid, probably neck deep in some pussy. With a girl, you know. Not in front of your mother, Dodd. They're offering to buy the whole operation, then pay us to run it. Bottom line. Bottom line, very little changes on the ground. We may actually earn more. Your father's not in a lucid state. Yeah, he's, he's a goner. I'm saying your grandpa built this business, but he's no longer capable of running it. As new boss, I say we tell these Kansas City schwanzers to go to hell in the fast lane. Now, hold on. What, you think it should be you? Oh, stupid. Mom, boss can't be a woman. This guy. Who says? Should be mom. Oh, yes. I vote for grandma. Shut up. We're not voting. Oh, my god. I'm oldest. The young prince. I'm boss. Oh, End of story. Give us a minute. Oh, she took the head. Woo! Mama don't play around. Mama does not play around. I'm interested. This moment. How will things go in the next few weeks? Will the side That's why let I... me finish? Your grandfather. Left the ashes of the Weimar Republic and came to this country to build a name for himself. He built an empire from a shoeshine box. And then, and only then, did he send for your father. Mm. Ma, I know the story. No, you don't. Because if you did, you'd know that you are just a small part of it. That's what an empire is. It's bigger than any son mm -hmm. or daughter. Eat. I'm not hungry. I'm your mother. You will eat with me. <sighs> Tell me she's poisoned that bread. Your time will come. It will. But this isn't it. Now, we need to find Rye. Can you do that for me? Yes, ma'am. Wherever he is, whatever he's doing, bring him home. He's hanging out in the freezer with a knife in his back or guts. Kind of both. So does Dodd respect his mother enough? Or is she going to have to put him in line? This is going to be really interesting. I, I can't call it at this point. I don't know. Well, I think history's proven people of the Germanic persuasion don't surrender easy. But you can kill them. Unless the woman, being a woman, maybe we can scare her. Oh, no. God. I think we could have deal with one of the sons. The youngest, maybe. Right. The oldest are... Well, you know, a lobster's got a pincher claw and a crusher claw. First Gerhardt to switch sides gets a shiny red apple. Sorry, Lab. Pause. So, are they going to approach Dodd so that he has a way out from under his mother's skirts with, like, an independent business? So even though he'll be reporting to them, he'll feel like maybe he's part, it's like a man's world thing? 
because clearly 1979 we've got a little patriarchy going on here i find it hilarious how it literally like like women <laughs> anyway so rock county sheriff department okay play yeah <laughs> okay then yeah <laughs> There's a shoe in that tree. It sure is. What? How did I get there? I, I despair, really. I just despair of it. I despair of it. Local matter, Pause. Yes. I'm just wondering if, because he was coked off his tits, was he seeing the reflection of the car lights on the white shoe that was in the tree? What did she just say? Honey, what did she just say? I'm thinking it was, an, it was a UFO. Or it... Is there a UFO in this? It's his shoe, isn't it? Oh, you idiot. It's his shoe. From when he was hit by the car. That's how it got in the tree. Price carry on. Once upon a time, there was uh, an oyster. What's an oyster? It's a shellfish. Apparently one of your victims was a judge. A judge, huh? Uh-huh. Papa! Hello, yes. It's the story. What story? The oyster. Oh, uh, yeah. Daddy, how would you feel if I peeled the roof off your house and ate you? Was that you? It was. That's the story of how your mom and me came to eat hot dogs for dinner once again. Mm-hmm. What a mess. Oh, mate. What did you stumble into, eh? Jeez, I'm your eye. Just tell me you hit your head or something. I, I got to There's too much stuff to do here. I, 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 the car's got to be cleaned. I'm worried she's going to set him up. Are you with me? Good. Here we go. Bear's thrown in with Mama. That's his loss. It's gonna be a war. Oh, this is Main Street. Hey. Expecting your husband? Yeah, he had a dinner last night. I think it was some bad clams. You know, from a can. Never trust anything comes from the sea. We came from the sea. Big night. Huh? Got a hangover? Oh, no, it's uh, just a migraine. You talked to Ed? She just check her out. About the seminar next weekend. Got us a room at the South Nick Hotel. Oh, yeah. No, I just, we got a plan, you know? The word we is a castle hung with a moat and a drawbridge. And you know what gets locked up in castles? Fair maidens. Dragons. Princesses, don't be a prisoner or we. It'll give you a key to the castle. Oh my God. I had a case of TP in the back last week. Somebody took it. Well, I'll coordinate with Sheriff Larson and head up to Fargo first thing tomorrow. Yep. Yay! Got it, so the, so the Waffle Hut is in Fargo. Yes? Right. And I'll call you back. Your day's about to get worse, my friend. Yeah, we're not really open, is the thing. We're not really customers. Okay. Well, Shit. Riker Hart. Oh. How about you just tell us where he is? Seeing as he works for you and all. Well, isn't that what you told Big Jim sucks? Over at the pig and poke yesterday. Oh, had a few drinks. Told me you had a girl heart in your pocket. I ain't never. Ow! Oh, he's gonna regret. Oh, shit. The judge! Go on. All I said was talk to her. What judge? 
Mutt! He's a Judge Mutt! Judge Mutt. Judge Mutt. Judge Mutt. She dead. She dead as a nade. We're gonna oh, hang show. him tonight. For now we're ahead of the posse. And now I'm inside of my oh, 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 fella. Oh, wait for this role. I thought it was a fancy.